everyone, Blue Goblin here with the latest comic book review blog for comic books that came out on the week of September 30th, 2009. Thanks for watching everybody, hope you're either catching this either on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, got a lot of books to cover, I got about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books to cover. This is only the, these are, I, I had more in my file, but these are the only ones I could afford this week. One indie book, D, and uh, three DCs, three Marvels. Let's get started by looking at some boobies. Terra, Witch of the Black Rose, number 58. What? What? Sorry, uh, Craig, hope you don't mind if I borrowed that, that, little, that little joke. But, come on, when you're dealing with books like this, somebody's got to be there to go, what? <laughs> but, in all honesty, <laughs> of course, of course people are going to rush, of course the guys are going to rush and buy this book for obvious reasons, but, you know what, call me crazy, I actually read the stories. You know, they're not that bad. I mean, you got story and art by Jim Ballant, the artwork is clearly outshining the story, but, uh, but I read this particular one, and, uh, Taro's sister, Raven Hex, here, uh, decides to become the new librarian for the, the Library of All Magic, and she gets cursed. Taro decides to save her and brings her out of the Library of Magic, all, thus foiling her plans to become the master of all magic, and uh, hilarity just ensues with just ginormously oversized, ridiculously sized breasts. But it's that's what makes the book beautiful, is... You know, not just the oversized breasts, but the beautiful artwork and the detail into each character. It, it's just, it, I love it. Yeah, I mean, it, is it cheeky? Well, hell yeah, it's cheeky, and that's why the guys are going to buy it, because of the ridiculously oversized breasts. But all in all, I'd say it's a good series. If you're not a fan of it, I don't know what's wrong with you, because it's it's cute. It's, it's damn cute. <laughs> I don't know what else to say without being a total perv. All right, let's jump into DC. We're going to Blackest Night Titans, uh, number two. Forgive the glare from the sun here. Uh, yeah, Blackest Night Titans, number two. Um, this wasn't as good as number one was, but it was still a good, solid read. It's damn better than um, Sean McKeever's run on Titans. Uh, I gave, I'm giving Titans another try, and it's not been, it hasn't been that bad. Um, I completely forgot about Donna Troy's husband. A little spoiler there. I'm sorry. Uh, her late husband. I completely forgot about him. Uh, I knew about her kid, but uh, I forgot about her husband. I don't know why I forgot about her husband. Um, the the Teen Titans, the the predecessors of the Adult Titans from Marv Wolfman, George Perez era from the eighties, now grown up. You know they play a role in this book as well. We got some stuff from Hawk and Dove, and you know what I see in this book makes me even further believe there will be a White Lantern Corps. I don't know. I don't know how many times Jeff Johns has denied that there will be a White Lantern Corps, but quit bullshitting us, Jeff. We know there's going to be at least a couple White Lanterns in the future, especially after reading this. Come on, don't bullshit us any further. But this was a this was a good read for Blackest Night fans out there. Is it the best? Hell no. But is it a good read? I'd say yes. All right, jumping right along. Green Lantern number forty six. This was uh, Ken Jackson's pick of the week, and I definitely got to agree with him. It was it's a it wasn't my pick of the week, but I, it was pretty damn good. You know, Jeff Johns, um, Doug Mankey deliver on this book. Very nice, and uh, we finally get something that I've been waiting for. A little spoiler alert here, Sinestro versus Mongol. We finally get it, and is it da it's, it's short, but it's good. It's really good. This book continues to deliver, you know... I mean, if you're not on if you're not on Green Lantern now, then what the hell is your problem? Now is the absolute perfect time to be a Green Lantern fan. You can jump on it any time. You don't have we don't you don't have to worry about missing back issues or missing past stories from years ago. You know, if you want to jump on the Green Lantern now, I suggest you do it now. Blackest Night is being it's just it's just beautifully done green lantern's a great book if you're not on it now then you should be that was a good book all right uh gotham city sirens number four uh paul dean and gillen march i love the team i love harley and ivy catwoman's pretty cool uh however uh it's not the best of the gotham stuff here everybody says that i should jump into you know <clears throat> everything batman but it's Right now with the Batman books, it is so financially difficult to get into everything Batman, so I just pick what I want. 
and Gotham City Sirens was good. We finally get the Joker back in the Batman books after a, a hiatus since Batman R.I.P. At least that's the last time I saw him. And it's good. I mean, this was really good. I mean, I felt like I was reading a script from the old Batman animated series that didn't, that was an episode that didn't feature Batman, you know? And, and, and I like that. I mean, Paul Dini writes good stories here. Not everybody's going to like this series, but I'm one of the guys that does like it, and I think you should too. It's really good. Now let's go on to Marvel. We got a real gem here Amazing Spider Man number 607. Meow. Believe that cover. Believe that cover. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's good to see Black Cat again. and uh, it, it is, It's hilarious to see her so horny. It's hilarious. And I love it. I mean, I hope Marvel continues to go with this kind of a plot. Not for, you know, five or six months' worth of books. You know, for, you know, at least a month's worth of books, we have some hilarity between Spider-Man and the Black Cat. You know... I hope Joe Kelly continues to write some good Spider-Man stories like this. Mike McCone and uh, Adrian Mel uh, Adriana Mello. I hope I pronounced her name right. I'm sorry if I didn't. Uh, the, great artwork, great writing, great everything. This right here, this was my pick of the week. I loved it. This is how a Spider-Man book should be. And for those of you fans who still won't read Amazing Spider-Man because of what happened with Mary Jane, you know, get over it. I'm over it. It's Amazing Spider-Man is a good read once again, even though, yes, brand new day and one more day still suck. All right. Uh, next up, X-Factor number 49. Okay, Peter David continues to write good stuff here. Uh, <laughs> we got some hilarious gay jokes hit by Strong Guy. But Strong Guy still is still accepting the fact that, yes, uh, Guido Sh Shatterstar, not Guido, I mean uh, Richter. Richter and uh, Shatterstar, yes, they're lovers, you know, but, you know, who gives a shit? You know, it's, good, it's still good story writing here. Very good stuff from Peter David. The only thing that bothers me about X-Factor right now, all right, next issue is going to be issue 50, and then they're saying that they're going to go back to the old numbering and go straight to 200. I'm just worried that 200 is going to end up being like oversized and five dollars, and like half of it is just going to be reprints of of shit that we don't really care about. You know, that's the only thing that's worrying me about X Factor right now. But until then, I'm enjoying the stuff very much, and I don't know. You know, Peter Davis still has yet to strike out with this book, but you know, I gotta say it again. I'm worried about issue 200 being ridiculous. You know, that's just me. Speaking of ridiculous, yet pretty still still pretty good. X Force. Number 19, Craig, uh, Craig, uh, Craig Kyle, Christopher Yost, hope, I hope I got that team right. Uh, I don't memorize people who, I don't usually memorize people who work on books like this, but, oh, this was good. The only thing I had a problem with is, why are you going to have Archangel on the cover when he's not in this particular issue? That's the only thing that bugged me. Other than that, it's a good story about X-23, her being kidnapped and tortured. Uh, you got agent, former agents of Shido coming to help her out. From some crazed bulletproof bitch uh, with chainsaws and everything, you know, blood everywhere. It's what you expect from an X Force book, but it's still a spot on book. And once again, this is another one of those X books that's got like that, oh, uh, you know, that, oh, uh, that punch in the ribs twist at the end. It just makes you go, son of a bitch. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's good. I mean, it's good. It's not the best X book out there this week, but, you know, it's, it's good. I would say it's definitely worth buying. It's, it's certainly better than Uncanny X-Men is doing right now. It's certainly better than X-Men Legacy is. I mean, X-Force and X-Factor are the books to have right now for X-Men fans. You know, sad but true, isn't it? <laughs> the two franchise X-Men books are completely blowing right now. All right, well, that's all I got for this week. I know there's probably some books that you wanted me to review and I didn't catch, but hey, money's kind of tight right now. You know, who knows? Maybe I'll pick some back issues up, and maybe I'll review them, maybe I won't. There you go. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. I would appreciate that. Uh, so I guess until next time, I'll see you later.